Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'll show you how to easily activate and update the firmware on your brand new Hubson Xeno Mini Pro. We've had a lot of questions about both of these procedures, so I thought I'd walk you through them. Now, activating the drone is a really easy thing to do, but when you first get it, it doesn't really know who you are. So the activation process allows the drone to sort of bind to you, just like it binds to the controller. And that way, every time you spin it up, it'll know who you are and it'll keep track of your flight characteristics and things like that. It's a really simple procedure, but I've had a lot of questions from folks asking why they need a phone number and an email. And honestly, it's really just to give the drone a little bit of personality. Now, as a test, when I activated mine, I set up a bunch of dummy emails anytime I'm activating a new product just to see if I'm going to get a ton of spam or a ton of uh, you know advertising content to that email. Well, I set up a dummy email for this one, and that's what I used to activate it. I haven't gotten a single advertisement, not a bit of spam, no communications whatsoever from Hubson on this, but I imagine if there's a critical firmware update or something I need to know about the drone, I'm sure I'll get an email from them. So don't worry about that, but if you're at all hesitant to give out your email, do what I do and set up another email on Gmail or one of the free services and use that email for your registration. So I'll show you how to activate it first. It's really a couple of steps, and then I'll come back and talk about the firmware updates and show you how to do those. So before you can use your new Xeno Mini Pro, you'll need to activate the drone by logging on to your Hubson account. On the main screen of the application, tap Next Step to get started. You'll have to enter a valid email address and phone number to get past this step, but as I mentioned, if you're uncomfortable using your personal email, set up a secondary email and you can use that to register. The next screen confirms your entry and activates the drone. You can also view some important flying safety tips if you're new to the hobby, or just tap OK to exit the screen. Your new drone is now activated and ready to fly. Just tap into flight to exit the screen and start flying. So that activation process could not have been simpler. And like I'd mentioned, if you're at all worried about using your personal email when you register in the drone, just set up a second email on one of the free services out there, whether it be Gmail or one of the other ones, and use that for registering it. And that way you'll be able to keep an eye on that email box and you'll find out that they're not gonna send you a lot of advertisements or spam. I've actually had the quad for a couple of months now. I haven't gotten a single email from Hubson either advertising something or spam from another company. So I'm feeling pretty secure they're not sharing it with anybody. But again, if you're at all hesitant, set up a second email box. All right, let's get on to the firmware updates now because it is a little bit different on the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro than it is on a lot of other drones like the DJI products. The firmware updates on this, just like with DJI, are done over the air or OTA, but they're done a little bit differently once you have the bits. So the first step in both of the upgrade procedures is to actually get the bits. And you'll know you need those bits because you'll get a notice on the screen saying, hey, there's a new version of firmware out. Do you want to download it? The difference between Hubson and DJI is with DJI, you download the bits over the air to your phone and eventually your controller, but then the controller will push those bits over the air to the drone. So it's really over the air twice for DJI. It's over the air to get them to your phone and over the air from your controller to your drone. It works really well, but if there's any kind of interference between the controller and the drone and that binding, it could take a long time or it may actually fail on you. Hubson does it a little bit differently. They actually download the bits to your phone while it's connected to the controller, and then you'll disconnect it from the controller and connect your phone directly up to the drone. And those firmware bits are being pushed over the wire to the drone, which is faster, more reliable, and I think just a better way to do it. Now, I've got to still play around a little bit with the rest of the firmware updates because so far I've gotten three firmware updates for the drone. I haven't seen any updates for the controller or updates for the batteries. Now, a few things I'll caution you on. Before you do a firmware update, always read through the release notes because I always like to know what they're introducing with this new version of firmware. And in some cases, you may want to wait a week or two and then check the boards or check our channel to see if anything funky happened with that new firmware update because the last thing you want to do is push firmware to the quad and lose functionality or have something be broken in there. So maybe wait a week or two when new firmware comes out. But sometimes the firmware is so compelling that I got to throw it in the drone right away and start flying. And I kind of do that anyway so I can notice problems and let you guys know about them. But in any case, in the firmware updates for the Hubson so far, I've seen three come out that all had great improvements on the quad. They improved some of the stability of the quad, some of the stability of the actual gimbal assembly up front. They've introduced a couple of other cool features in there. So make sure you do those updates and then check afterwards to see if everything's working okay. One other thing I wanted to mention is with DJI drones, when you're doing the updates, and it's doing updates to the battery. Because remember, these are intelligent batteries. There's a little controller inside there that has to keep track of how the battery's charging, how it's draining, how it's talking to the quad. 
So there's firmware in here as well. And with DJI, if you only update the firmware in the quad and then go out to fly, you might find that part of that firmware update package actually wants to update firmware on the controller or the battery as well. So my suggestion is, whenever you do a firmware update on DJI, Hubson, or any of the others, do it with a battery, and then before you go out to fly, power it down, slide a new battery in, power it back up. If you get a firmware update warning, that just means that there was battery firmware that didn't get to these because they weren't inside the quad. So always walk your batteries through the quad during the update procedure to make sure that you get all the firmware to all the devices at the same time. All right, enough of me talking. Now I'm going to walk you through the process for updating the firmware. It's an incredibly straightforward process. You're basically just tapping the screen at various points and moving the phone from the controller to the drone, and it actually prompts you to do that. So here we go. Take a look at this next. When new firmware is available for your Xeno Mini Pro drone, you'll see a notice on the home screen of the application prompting you to upgrade. To start this process, simply tap Upgrade. The application will prompt you to disconnect your phone from the controller and connect it directly to your drone. You can use the same cable you use to connect your phone to your controller for this step. Once you have made the connection, tap Upgrade. This will take you to the main upgrade screen and you can tap download firmware files to start the procedure. This first step in the process will download the upgrade software to your device and this can take a few minutes depending on your connection speed. Once this download finishes, you'll see the screen change and you're now ready to transfer these files to your drone and upgrade the firmware. Tap the upgrade tab to start the transfer. You'll be able to view the progress of the file transfer and upgrade as it's happening in real time. The drone may reboot a few times during the process to install the new files. Once the upgrade completes, the drone may reboot one more time before it's ready to fly. Tap the Finish tab to exit the screen. On the next screen, tap Clear Upgrade Files to remove the unneeded files from your device and help clear up storage space. Finally, tap Finish to exit the upgrade procedure. At this point, the upgrade is complete and you're ready to fly your drone. Okay, and that's all there is to it. So again, the firmware updates on the Hubson Xeno Mini Pro to me are a little bit easier than the DJI updates because a couple of times with the quad, on all the quads I fly from DJI, I've had interruptions with the bits being moved to the quad. And honestly, moving it over the air, even with OcuSync 2, is a lot slower process than having a direct wire connection from my phone to my actual drone where I can push those bits at a really high rate of speed. I also like the resiliency of that connection between my phone and the quad where I know it's not going to break. It's going to get the firmware update done and it happens really quickly. The other thing I did notice was it does get warm when you're doing the firmware updates. I've talked about this before. There's a lot of electronics going on in there and when you're pushing firmware to the quad, you've got to wake up a lot of circuits inside the drone. So all those circuits are sweating at the same time. You don't have the benefit of flying, which would pull air past the bottom of it to cool it off. So my main suggestion is when you're doing the firmware updates, either put the grid on, that sort of heat sink grid on there, so it doesn't get too hot for the table, or just flip it over like I do. <laughs> the quad doesn't know that it's upside down when it's doing its firmware updates, and if you finish a firmware update and it comes up with some kind of wacky compass calibration error, just, comp just calibrate the compass and you'll be all set. But flip it over and that way any heat that's generated can sort of radiate up and away from the quad, and you'll be in really good shape. Both of the updates I've done, actually three updates I've done, have taken less than five minutes, six minutes total. So it's a really quick process, but I found that updating the firmware really, really helps with keeping the drone stable in the air and it's improved some of the other feature sets. And, and I say again, I love a company, whether it be Hubs and DJI, I'll tell anybody that can push firmware to a product and actually make it better than the day I bought it. Now, I know a lot of people complain and say, oh, why didn't they wait till everything was ready before they released the drone? I get that. But if you wait till everything's perfect, the drone may be outdated because other companies are chasing you. So I like getting a drone in my hands early, knowing certain things have to be updated, and firmware takes care of that. And to be honest, every drone I've flown from the box, out of the box, in the sky, has had firmware updates later that corrected things that were promised at launch that weren't in the drone. And that goes for all the manufacturers out there. So I wouldn't pick on them too hard, but I do love the fact that they're pushing firmware responsibly out to the field to help you update the quad and make it a better flying machine. And that's all I had for today. So hopefully you found this clip helpful. If you have any questions about what I talked about today or anything else I'm covering on the channel, please drop those in the comments below and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I have a ton more technology clips coming. We've been doing a lot of reviews on different products, drones, portable power stations, all kinds of home automation systems, 
systems. So stay tuned to the channel. I'm just so excited about what's going to happen this year for Drone Valley, and I hope you guys are excited as well. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that icon down there in the corner and join the Drone Valley family. We'd love to have you as part of the family, and I'm just having so much fun with this channel, and I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. So anyway, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy flying! Thank you.